Hey everybody, and welcome to your indie snapshot for today. Today, we're taking a look at a really unique game, a game that I'm a little late in the uptake, unfortunately, for, and that is called The Yogg. Uh, the Yogg is, the easiest way to explain it, a choose-your-own-adventure story game in which it takes maybe five to ten minutes at most to play through one session of. And really, I think it's just easier to just play and show than describe what, it, what really the game is. Um, so at the beginning of the game, you are asked to take to choose a minimum of two characters and a maximum of four, obviously, because there's only four here. And these are going to be the characters you're going to be playing through for the game session. Um, so for now, I am going to pick uh, this dashing young lad and this mysterious maiden here. And we're going to hit enter. I'm going to dive right into the game, the Yogg. The Yogg will be here in six weeks, and no one expects it. Not a, not a one of us. We just keep on living our lives week by week, unaware. So, the gist of the game is to take your characters and move them from place to place amongst the town while you wait for the Yogg to arrive, which is going to be in about six weeks. And uh, we'll see what happens when the Yogg arrives, but uh, we'll move them around and we'll see what happens. So every time you choose a place, say I want to move her to the hospital, uh, you hit enter, and you have a choice of two things to do at the place. I can either go to the hospital and clean up the hospital, or tend to the patients. Let's tend to the patients. Uh, you spend the week diagnosing and tending to the sick. You gain two mind and one wealth. One day, a patient comes into the hospital with sores that nobody has ever seen before. While walking by his bedside, he looks at you and rudely asks for a glass of water. So, uh, as I said, you have when you go to a place, you're going to have two choices of things to do. When you choose what to do, you're going to get boosts in your stats automatically. Now, whatever choice you do is going to give you a boost to your stats. And then, after that happens, you're going to be given an event. And the event always gives you a choice of something to do. And there's uh, always multiple outcomes to that event. So the event I was given this time is a sick man with lesions asked for a glass of water rudely. Do I get him water or ignore him? Now, sometimes the events can be like, you get jumped by bandits. What do you do? Try to run or, or fight them or try to pay them what they want. Um, and you, your stats will pop up over on the side over here, and if I say have a high physique, fighting them might be my best option because I'll have a higher chance of fighting them off. Whereas, if I have a low physique but high wealth, maybe paying them and saving my life will end up being better. But this is an interesting one, I've never seen it before. So, uh, for this one, I think I'll get him the water. I am tending to the patients, I'm gonna try and be kind to him, so let's get him some water. You bring him a small glass to quench his thirst, he takes a large sip, swigs it around, and then proceeds to spit it at you. The water hits you right in the face. After cleaning up, you scold the obviously insane man for spitting at you. That night, when you go home, you feel dizzy and start having vivid hallucinations about ancient wizards. Okay. You gain three magic. Oh, okay. You lose three mind. Okay, so I lost a lot of my mind and uh, basically going insane, but I gained a lot of magic skill in the process. Interesting. All right, let's take our strapping young lad, and he seems to be a charmer. Let's go to the tavern. Get him in there. Let's have him bartend. You spend the week serving drinks at the tavern. I earn one wealth and tips and two charm. One day, a fortune teller sets up at one of the tavern's tables. She offers to read anybody's fortune for a small sum. I can give up my one and only wealth for the fortune. Sure. You spend one wealth. The fortune teller takes your hand and begins showering you with promises of love and wealth. She doesn't really go into any detail, and the whole time you can't help but feel this is all an act. Underwhelmed and slightly poorer, you can't help but feel like you've wasted your money. How unfortunate. So that's week one. Uh, they say the last time it came, the Yogg devoured houses whole. Stole lives, tore families and family members apart, but that was so very long ago. So they keep what this Yogg is very ominous. And the way they describe it, it seems to be some sort of monster, perhaps. And this is, uh, one of the things I want to say is, is that the game's looks, obviously all hand-drawn, looks really good. Almost, um, I guess kind of Tim Burton-esque. I like it a lot. It just looks really cool. Uh, I think it's really good. And this is obviously going to be a game for those who kind of like these choose your own adventures, semi-roleplay games. It's not an in-depth action RPG. It's not like Skyrim. It's all about the experience and checking out everything that could possibly happen in the game. All right, so we gained three magic. Why not head to the Alchemy Tower? Uh, let's brew potions. We're really good at this now. We have magic. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and a mind. That's good, since we lost one. Over the course of the week, you notice yourself growing more and more spiral-shaped sores all over your body. One day, the sores begin to glow a vibrant blue. You feel magical power grow even stronger while your mind slips further and further. You gain three magic. You lose three mind. In no time, the sores are glowing so bright that they hurt to look at. Someone rushes up to you asking if you're alright. With only a glance, you set him aflame. Oh god, we set some guy on fire. 
Then you let out a scream that shakes the earth and shatters the skulls of all nearby. Oh my god, what? So this guy who had a magical disease was like super powerful apparently. A river of blood coats the ground as you walk about, reveling in your destruction. You black out. When you come to, you're at home in your bed. Your sores have faded and you feel like disease symptoms have passed. Well then, I am now a great and powerful wizard. Um, I am going to send my strapping young man to the gardens. We're going to have him landscape. You spend the week maintaining the plants in the royal garden. You gain a fitness and physique and earn one wealth. One day on your way home from the park, you come across a golden ring in the grass. I'll wear the ring. Upon placing the ring on your finger, orange glowing markings appear on the outside of the band. The markings unravel themselves and ring and swirl in front of you. They form what appears to be a fully armored ghost radiating a beautiful orange light. The ghost turns to you and nods before walking away. The ring looks good on you. I gained a charm. That worked, surprisingly. It was, uh, it was on us in a heartbeat, or so the stories go. The earth shook, the air went still. Okay. So now we have our incredibly powerful woman here. Let's send her to the slums. Uh, let's see. Well, she's magical. Let's have her fight crime with magic. You spend the week outsmarting and beating up criminals. You gain a mind, a physique, and a finesse. One night, a small child approaches you with his hands cupped out stretched toward you. He doesn't say anything, but looks up at you with wide eyes, waiting expectantly. Why do I feel like this guy is here to completely rob me? Let's give him my wealth. Toss him a sack of coins. He thanks you and walks away. The next day, you recognize him on the street. You spot him eating what looks like a fresh loaf of bread. He sees you and smiles. You feel good about yourself. You gain one physique. You gain one finesse. You gain one mind. You gain one charm. You gain one magic. I got everything. All right, our charmer here. Let's send him to the arena. Let's have him bat in a fight. Well, he has no money. Let's have him compete in a fight. You spend the week fighting brutes in the arena. You gain two physique and a finesse. Over the course of the week, every time you'd ever be in danger or lose a fight, your dagger would appear in your hand. You would cut the opposing fighter in two, and they would dissolve into ash. Every time you'd feel as though you'd absorb some of their power. I gain two physique and a finesse. What am I, the Highlander? Nobody would ever seem to acknowledge that you even killed your opponent. One day, while wandering the halls, one of your arena's fighters approaches you. Excuse me, sir, I need a sparring partner, he says. Are you down for a fight or two? Refer to him to the burly guy next to you, or accept his challenge. Well, I've got a good physique, let's accept his challenge. Let's do this, he screams. He takes a swing at your head. You get punched square in the face. The next thing you know, you're in the arena's infirmary. It appears that the punch gave you headache, headache and verendous. Uh, symptoms include having a mild headache forever. You lose one mind. And then the world is a howling fury, chaos, screaming, the sound of all we knew being pulled in half. Week four. All right, what are we going to do with her? The gardens? Uh, the palace? Let's go to the palace. Attend the ball, do administration work. Let's attend the ball. You spend the week attending fancy gatherings. You gain two charm and a finesse. One day the court jester approaches you. Would you like to learn to juggle? He asks excited. I'll teach you everything I know for a small sum. No thanks. Hmm, says the jester. He walks away disappointed. I'm not spending my money on learning how to juggle. Uh, let's head to... Um... The slums. And I'm gonna pickpocket. I am the criminal. You spend the week performing petty theft. You gain a wealth of two finesse. One night you hear cheering coming from an alleyway. Peering in, you see a crowd of men cheering on dogs violently ripping each other apart. That's not good. One of the men spots you and asks, Oi, would you like to participate in our little bang game? Bet on dog fights. Try to stop the dog fights. You try to convince the gamblers that dog fighting is wrong. Your words fall on deaf ears. You very quickly, they get angry with you. Instantly, your dagger appears in your hand. In a flash, your blade slashes through every one of the gamblers. Oh my god, their wounds erupt in a blinding light as they crumble to ash. You feel yourself absorbing their power. Why is my dagger so magical? You gain one finesse. You stop the town's illegal dog fighting. You feel very good about yourself right now. I gain one physique, finesse, mind, charm. I gain blank. When it arrives this time, how will we fare? Will we come more? Will we once more rebuild, move on, be strong, or have we forgotten? So we're very close to the Yogg approaching. As, as you can tell, the music has changed. Um, let's head to the slums and let's fight some more crime. You gain one mind, physique, and finesse. One day, while wandering the slums, you notice that the stones used to line the road seem to have a certain pattern to them. You don't manage to figure out the mystery, but you still feel pretty smart about for noticing patterns in the tile. I gain a mind. That's interesting. Let's go to the palace. Let's attend the ball with our charmer. Two charm and a finesse. One night, just before you head home, you notice the king going for his nightly stroll around the palace courtyard. Suddenly, your dagger appears in your hand, emanating a thick black smoke. You lose control of your body as the choking smoke fills outward where you stand. With an enormous leap, 
You're, you land on top of the king, stabbing him through the heart. A blinding light erupts from the king's chest as his body crumbles into ash. What? You can feel yourself absorbing his power. You gain a charm and a physique. Oh, and we destroyed the castle. The earth shakes violently, destroying the palace behind you. In an instant, you appear back in your home. On your bed is a large bag filled with coin. You gain three wealth. Attached to it is adorned with the picture of a headless raven. The Yogg, it's almost here. Almost. Almost. This is the last week, apparently. And we killed the king and destroyed the alchemy tower in the process, so... I don't know if what we've done is good or bad. Let's head out to the forest and go hunting. You spend the week hunting various defenseless crit critters. You gain two finesse and sell the pelts for one wealth. One day you come across a group of people in the woods. From the expressions on their faces, they appear to be lost. Well, let's, uh, rob them. No, she's a crime fighter. We want to help them. You confront the group and try to help them find their way back to town. With ease, you lead everyone back to town. Extremely grateful, the group gives you a small token of their appreciation. I gained two wealth. What are we going to do with our Kingslayer here on this last day? Let's head to the, uh, hospital. No, let's go to the tavern and bartend a bit. Serving drinks, I earn a wealth and gain two charm. One day, a bard pulls out his lute to the bard and starts playing a tune. Unfortunately, his singing is horrible and is ruining the tavern's atmosphere. You decide to do something about it. Uh, challenge him to a loot duel. Sure. You borrow the bar on his loot and challenge the bar to a musical duel. You play a beautifully complex combination of arpeggios. Uh, God, I can't speak. The tavern roars with applause. The bard tries his best to replicate your piece, but ends up dropping his loot, snapping it in half. He bows his head shamefully in defeat and walks out the tavern. I gain a finesse and a charm. The storm arrives in the night. By the morning, it still rages. For three full days, the tempest puts us through grinder, drowns us, crushes us, ruins us. But then it ends. We see the graveyard of our home has become. Our home does does anything yet live? Is it? Are we past saving? So, all the while we're playing and making these decisions, as I said, we're upping our stats. But I haven't really kind of talked about what the stats are for. Well, the stats are quite for this. When the Yogg arrives, it is no monster. It's actually a huge flood. And we are to choose a role for all of our people. And of course, depending on our stats, determines how good we're going to be at certain things. So, we want to choose a role for each one of our characters here. Uh, I don't know who we're choosing for right now, but if it's the girl, we want her to be the conjurer. You take it upon yourself to help conjure up supplies for the town. With your magic, you summon supplies of the highest caliber. With little effort, you're summoning high-quality lumber and food from out of nowhere. This helps rebuilding your effort significantly. So, we made her conjurer because her magic skill was so high. Now, with our gentleman, uh, leader would might be a good choice, builder might be a good choice as well, as well as maybe the looter. Um, making all of these really useful, um, for the most part. If we choose something that's not so good, it's going to reflect poorly and we could get a bad ending. There are multiple endings to the game depending on how well you end up doing. Let's make him the leader because I think his charm was his highest. You take it upon yourself to be the leader of the survivors. You expertly delegate and prioritize tasks. You give motivating speeches and act as an effective mediator in disputes. I like how our criminal is now the leader. This helps the rebuilding effort significantly. Uh, and so, we set about our task once more living our lives, this time in a way we might have never expected, or even wanted. But in the end, we flourished. Towers once wrecked and ravaged rose toward the sky. Trees again took root, then blossomed. We all blossomed. And though it took a long while, and though it took a lot from us, our future is bright. Should the Yogg ever return, we will be ready. And oh, we got a good ending, because we actually did really well. We actually min-maxed our stats pretty decently. Let's see what uh, what's going to end up of our two leftover characters, because they get their own special ending. With the town rebuilt, you decide to celebrate. You organize a huge festival in honor of the bravery that helped save so many lives. The first one is so successful, you decide to make it an annual tradition. Every year, the festival gets bigger and more elaborate, and every year it costs more and more money to put on. You have start... Excuse me. You have to start changing admissions, and no one is happy about it. The annual festival slowly fades out of relevance, and before long, is canceled completely. You don't really know what to do with your life after all of that. Really? You're hugely magical and you have no idea what to do with your life. With the town rebuilt, you decide to become a full-time arena warrior. You slowly rise the rank, knocking out scores of fighters. Even ones as great as Jean the Beautiful. Before long, you become the arena champion. You travel across the world fighting at the very best of the best. Tales are sung far and wide of your mighty feats of strength. So he gets a good ending. And that's the Yogg, really. That's just how the Yogg is played. It is a choose-your-own-adventure game. Um, almost like, a, I don't, that's a bad comparison. It's gonna say something almost like, um, 
Fahrenheit or uh, heavy rain, but not obviously quite, quite as depth in depth, but it's all about making decisions of playing. I love this game. I am so happy I invested in it. It is such a fun game. It's like 10 bucks all told, and uh, you get a lot of enjoyment out of it. it it's, it's really fun. I, I mean, granted, the endings may not be the most satisfying thing in the world, like as far as whether you succeed in rebuilding the town or not, but seeing your personal character's ending is really cool, and being able to uh, determine what their stats are, seeing all the random events that happen, and how they actually intertwine with one another, like my magical dagger, which I don't remember getting in this playthrough, but I apparently did, um, is a lot of fun. Definitely worth checking out. I think it's worth playing, and I definitely would think if this is, it might not be everybody's cup of tea. I can definitely see how it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but if it is, guys, definitely check it out. Uh, if not, I mean, I, at least I got to introduce you to this game. That's all I can do. It's a, it's a cool little indie game, and I think it's well worth it. The link to purchase it will be in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching this indie snapshot for today. I hope you enjoyed it thoroughly. I know I did. God, the music's really good too. Super awesome. And I'll see you all next time.